Guys, this might be the episode that breaks me. In between computer issues, emulation issues, technical issues, and tennis shoes, I was so close to just pulling the plug on this episode and not having an episode this month. And I know I don't have that big of a following. There's not that many people that's going to be upset, but I'll be upset. I can't do that to y'all. And in case you've never watched this before, my name's Stuart K. Riley. If you've never heard of me, I'm Stuart K. Riley, and this is Working Man Games. Hello! Okay, kids. First off, the Commodore 64 has nothing to do with the Nintendo 64. Erase that from your head. Now then, the C64 was a budget price computer made in 1982 that competed with the other 8-bit computers at the time. To put it in perspective, a PC running DOS was $1,300 in 80s money, and so was an Apple II, but you could get a Commodore 64 for $600, and the older the C64 got, the more the price went down. So you could see why people would buy it over other platforms. Now, now, Atari, which started feeling the sting from the video game crash a year later, had the 400 and the 800, which were priced similar to the C64 and were basically a 5200 with a keyboard. And that was basically Commodore's only real competitor. Well, except for the Coleco Atom and the Mattel Aquarius and the Tandy and the Timex Sinclair and the... and the... The C64 spent a lot more time as an actual computer and as an educational teaching tool in the U.S. In fact, my personal C64 actually has a tag from the school that bought it. But in the U.K., it was a serious and inexpensive game console. In the late 80s, when the Sega Master System and the NES had arrived on the scene, consoles costed as much or more than a computer. In fact, if you look at this sales brochure, there were several computers that costed less or as much as an NES. And came with some games. And of the many computers you had to choose from in Europe, one of them was the C64. So there are lots of people who grew up with the C64 as their main game system. Never touched an NES, Atari, Sega, nothing. So as you can imagine, lots of people are nostalgic over this thing. But I'm not. I had a 2600 and an NES as my first console and had several mainstream consoles since. I didn't even grow up with PC games because by the time I got my first PC, I was too busy with my PlayStation, and I didn't have any internet at all to download games off of. So, I'm a Southern American who grew up on consoles, and had actually never heard of the Commodore 64 until I was older. I'm an outsider looking in, a fresh face, and the reason I tell you all of that is because I'm about to look at the games the C64 has to offer, and see how it holds up as a retro game system today, as someone who has no nostalgia for it. I I couldn't care if it shat or went blind. Now with all that backstory out of the way that you most likely skipped through because I bored you to death, let's play the Commodore 64. Now playing games on the C64 is easier said than done. There was a couple of different ways to play games. There were cartridges which in my opinion were the best method because you pop it in, you turn it on, and you play. But they were expensive and expensive to make too. So what most people had in the US at least were floppy disks and guys let it be known. Let the word go forth to every person on the universe that these are the slowest fucking floppy disks in all creation. This computer may very well hold the world record for the slowest loading games in existence. My God! Even when I unlocked the frame rate on the emulator, it still took forever to load. And by the time it finally fucking loads, you may find yourself playing the shittiest version of Street Fighter you've ever seen. Yeah, wait till you see how you do combos on this crap. But you know what? That's nothing. It gets worse. Floppies are actually one of the better choices of media to play your games on because there's a third option. And that option is, hold on to something for this, a cassette tape. Yes, the same kind of cassette tape your mother listens to the Moody Blues on. Don't listen to the Moody Blues. Listen to Saxon. You pop this cassette tape into this proprietary tape deck that half the time doesn't even work right. Type a command on the computer and then press play and wait. How long, you ask? Are you sitting down for this? 20 motherfucking minutes! I'm not making this up! I've downloaded, installed, and started playing some games in less than 20 minutes on a one megabit per second connection because Starlink still isn't here yet and I'm pretty pissed about that, can't you tell? 20 damn minutes to load one game that's probably less kilobytes than the text document I wrote this script on. And like I said, even unlocking the frame rate in the emulator still takes a long time. 
I've sped up the emulator, made like a macro and took a hyper dump in the toilet, came back and it was still loading. Yeah, it ain't looking so good for the old Commodore. So what do you have for a controller on these things? Well, that's where you can get creative. It uses a 9-pin, just like an Atari and a Sega. So you can use an Atari or a Sega controller. Or you can do what lots of people did and go out and buy a third-party joystick. Let me tell you something. 9-pin joysticks are a hell of a rabbit hole. You have so many companies, designs, and variances in build quality and joysticks that have more than one name depending on what store sold it. And different amounts of buttons on each one, which is ridiculous because the C64 can only register one button. So all the buttons on the joystick all do the same thing. Now I wanted to play these games with an appropriate controller, so I ended up buying a few different joysticks. Here's the Suncom TAC-5, the one I use the most. This stick has micro switches in it like a real arcade joystick. They make noise too. It's really loose though, and for some reason you can twist the stick. I know modern USB flight sticks let you do that too, but this one does it because it's made like shit. And here's the quick shot too. This one's funny because it doesn't have micro switches, but they intentionally made the switches clicky sounding to make you think it did. Damn! I actually have one taken apart right now because they were made so cheap that one of them has a bad solder joint and won't go to the right, so it probably didn't work when it was new. Anyway, you got your crappy joysticks, you got your slow-ass floppy drive and your tape deck, and you're ready to play some C64 games. So, what do you play? How about pirates? You know, I could make a joke about the fact I downloaded these ROMs, but I'm not gonna. Okay, let me go ahead and edit out the three and a half minutes this screen was up. So basically, you just create a character here, and then you become a captain of a ship. So after a little bit of story, a little bit of text, I'm fighting the captain of a ship that I'm trying to take over. It immediately becomes clear to me I should have read the manual. I jerk the joystick around and tap buttons, and sometimes I hit him, but mostly he hits me until I surrender. <laughs> Continue unpromising career. <laughs> you know what? Let's do it. Insert disc side two. Oh, already? There's a lot of reading that goes into this game. I guess back then they just expected you to use your imagination. So I go to a bar and some people want to join my crew. I sign them up. The factions do faction stuff. I buy some lamp oil rope and bomb from the merchant we are sailing and boy i didn't know you could put tank controls on a ship you push up to accelerate and then turn either way i found a ship while i was out there and away we go it was only then that i realized i don't have any ammo so my new strategy becomes maneuver this tank controlled ship to the other ship and ram into him and apparently that triggers something and I'm back to this sword fight again. And here I am trying to figure out how this works again while they're feeding me all this new information down here. It is then that I find out that you can actually take too long to do this and lose all your men and you automatically lose. But even after you lose all your ships and all your men, the game still keeps going. Now I'm on an uncharted island living with the natives. Then one of my old crew members found me and then I went back to captaining. So we sail forth looking for the bobcat booty. We find another ship and the whole whole process starts all over again. This time I've got some ammo, not that it helps, I can't aim the cannons for shit. And after two and a half minutes of embarrassment, die. Okay, I think I figured out what you're supposed to do on the sword parts. You hold the fire button down and then you push up, down, left, or right, or whatever to use the sword. There's apparently a way to block, but I couldn't figure it out. After I figured that out, I just started going to the ships as fast as I can to go straight to the sword part. The game has got a lot going on for something on a computer from the early 80s. It just takes so damn long to load, and when the game does play, it's really slow paced. However, I have heard there's remakes of this game that are way better. I need to try one of those one day. By the way, this is what the C64 looks like when you turn it on. Yeah, the GTA Vice City intro. There's not really much you can do here other than load your games. Or you can make the computer say things to you. This machine just called me an asshole! Airborne Ranger. Now, the funny thing about this game is the closest thing I could compare it to is Fortnite. You're given a mission, and then you're supposed to drop yourself wherever you want on this map. Where we drop it, boys? When you get down to the ground, the first thing you notice is that the controls are really weird. It's like tank controls times 10. Instead of the joystick moving you in the direction you move it, your character has to rotate to that direction really slowly, then move that direction. And since the joystick is an analog, it takes a while to position yourself where you want, especially in a gunfight. 
The enemies ain't what kills me, it's the damn mines! <laughs> It seems no matter what I do, I step on a mine. And when you do, it's game over and you have to wait a full minute for the game over screen to pop up. I even had one instance where I spawned directly on top of a mine. How the fuck is that fair? Okay, let's fucking make a game where as soon as you start, you die. And then the game uninstalls and then it sends you a virus and it sends your mother your entire porn collection. We'll call the game Life's a Bitch. Barbarian, now this one wasn't too bad. It's a two-player fighting game with swords. The controls feel kind of clunky, but you do get used to them. Basically, every direction on the joystick is its own move, and you can actually hold the fire button down and get a whole new set of moves. It took me a while to figure out what controls work good and what don't, and the game is kind of slow-paced, but it's alright. I can't say the same thing about Barbarian 2, though. It was pretty shitty. They, like, kept most of the moves from the Barbarian game, but then tried to make it into an action adventure type of game and basically it's Mortal Kombat mythologies. The enemies have way too much health. They're almost like little bosses in and of themselves. This is the first monster in the game and it's taken forever to kill him. Ah, there, shit. Oh, what, I guess this is lava then? Well, jump over it. Jump, jump over it. Jump. Oh my god. Okay, let me explain something. Up is jump, but you don't just press up. You have to get a running start, then press up. And by the time I had figured that out, another enemy spawned in. Uh, this is the first screen of the game, man. First screen. Finally, a jump, and an awkward one at that. The controls are so damn unresponsive, every little jump feels like a miracle. Okay, now it's just trolling me at this point. So fuck this game and its mama. I'd like to take this time to tell you about the absolute best thing about the Commodore 64, and that is the SID chip. It makes the sound and the music on the C64, and if it weren't for this little chip, chip tunes would not exist. Because you could be playing the world's worst Commodore game in the world, and it have some banging awesome music. Case in point, one of the most famous Commodore 64 four songs in the world, Comic Bakery. <laughs> some catchy shit. You know, I had probably heard about half a million remixes of this song before I finally heard the original. There's even a remix of it on another game, Jurassic Park for the NES. So what is Comic Bakery? Well, basically, you've got bread on a conveyor belt, you push these switches to keep it moving, and you gotta keep these raccoons from stealing it from you. The raccoons on the bottom ain't no big deal because you hit them with a stun gun. Yeah, shock the little bastards. You keep moving the bread across the belts until 5 p.m. when it tallies up your score. What's funny is, even if you don't get any bread at all through the conveyors, it still takes you to the next level. I never figured out how to keep that raccoon at the top from eating your bread. Maybe there's a method I don't know about. Either way, game's okay. It gets a pass. Commando. Now, I've played this on the NES before, so I've got something to compare it to. The NES one did not have this banging soundtrack, though. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, you can bob your head to that. Yeah. Oh, I was rocking out to that, man, shit. It's considerably harder than the NES version, and the NES version's pretty hardcore. For one thing, it has these points where the scrolling stops, and then there's just a fuck ton of enemies coming out this door. It's pretty damn brutal, and I only got this far by having infinite lives. Then the second level sticks your ass to a cheese grater. One thing I didn't like is that the grenades are bound to the space bar, so you have to hold the joystick and keep your hand on the keyboard at the same time. Doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of a controller? Imagine a game where you have to use a mouse, a keyboard, and a controller at the same time. Uh, yes, our target audience is hentai tentacle monsters. So basically, my review is play the NES version, but listen to the C64 version. Clyde Radcliffe and Torture Trouble Creature- Excuse me, I wasn't done reading! I will never know what it is! Well, well this might be the cutesiest game I ever played on this thing, but don't be fooled by its child-friendly exterior. The person that made this game is a pure sadist. Okay, class, today we're going to learn about... It's detection! 
When you are making your games, it's always important to make the hitbox twice the size of whatever object you're making. Okay, so what I can gather from this game is you're supposed to get to that bomb. Now, what is the bomb for? I have no fucking clue because I didn't get that far. This seems to be one of those memory games where you're supposed to make these absolutely precise movements in order to defeat the enemies. It kind of reminds me of Ricky and Vicky, a game I reviewed years ago, except this game doesn't have cute toony fox furries and cool music. And that game was actually good. This game is borderlining on impossible unless you have the reflexes of a Smash player. And I don't, but unlike Smash players, I have a life, so... How about a death montage? You are dead. Defender of the Crown was boring as fuck. That's my review. <sighs> I mean, I could try to review it, I guess. I don't know. Robin Hood's in it for like two seconds and not the good one. The one that puts the knot in Nottingham. There's a bunch of strategy game stuff and we're supposed to believe this is an epic battle of some type. I've seen fan-made epic rap battles that were more epic than this. You know what? I should green screen this. Here's Dixie. Friday the 13th and you thought the NES one was the only one. You and nine friends are spending the summer holidays at Crystal Lake Holiday Camp, miles away from civilization. Blah, 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 blah. Jason is waiting. Blah, 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 kill Jason. <laughs> da, 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 da. How many games use that? Fuck. Well, first you gotta go find yourself a weapon, then you gotta start looking for Jason, who looks more like Michael Myers than he does Jason. How do you know where he is? Well, there's a musical cue that starts playing when he's out and about, but it's not enough to just go look for him. He disguises himself as some of the other campers. And if you don't find him in time, this happens. <laughs> That's okay, I didn't need my ears today. There's 10 children on the map, including you, and when they all die, that's it. I never was able to kill Jason, but Jason killed me one time. You seem to have lost your head, what a shame. <laughs> What's weird is you have to attack other campers to find out if they're Jason or not, and you can accidentally kill them doing that, so you could do a genocide run of this game and just help Jason out. It's actually more fun doing that than it is killing Jason. The government was right, video games are turning our children into serial killers. And when I say it's more fun to not play the game correctly, I mean this game isn't fun at all. Most of it is just walking around these same map screens over and over trying to find Jason while this loud, awful music plays. Anyway, this game is just crap and I hated it. I hope whoever made this game gets stuck in a sleeping bag and smashed against a tree, man. G.I. Joe. Now this one I've got mixed feelings about. There's two types of levels in the game. One is pretty good, actually, but the other one is terrible. In the bad one, you get four different vehicles to choose from. A jet, a tank, a helicopter, and a jeep. And they all suck various flavors of ass. The jet is the fastest one, but you can't hit anything with it. Plus, it makes this god-awful noise. If there was an opposite of ASMR, it would be called ACBT, and it would be this game. You want to know the stupid way you aim with this jet? It is not possible! Basically, you don't. You change your altitude, and depending on how high or low you are, that's where your missile is going to aim. How in the hell are you supposed to figure that out? If they gave you a crosshair, maybe you would stand a chance? It doesn't help that you're steadily having to fight guided missiles, and if you get too low to the ground to shoot, you'll hit the damn trees. Plus, it takes 40 miles to turn this damn thing around. As for the Jeep, you can actually hit stuff with it, but it is so slow and you can't dodge anything with it. And the helicopter has the same problems as the jet, except it's slow. So it's actually worse. I didn't even try the tank. If you want to try it, be my fucking guest. It upsets me so much that this level exists in the game and you can't skip it or anything, because you have this level select, but the level select doesn't tell you which type of level you're gonna play. Because the other kind of level isn't that bad. It's a 1v1 shoot em up. You only get to shoot one time, then your gun overheats and you gotta wait for it to cool back down. You shoot it once and it's already disabled. Where'd you get this gun? Wish.com? And I don't remember bullets being so slow you can run as fast as them. Anyway, you just keep shooting him till his life runs out. I think it was possible to play this in two player? I'm not sure. I hope so, because this seems like it would be fun as a two player game. See, I like this. I would rather play this, not this. This should have been the whole game. It's getting a 5 out of 10 because I like half of it. Ghosts and, ghosts and goblins, really? Wonder if this one's hard as balls too. What's that zombie got, a tuba? A 
fuck off. You spawned right under me. What? What, what killed me? What killed me? Really? Oh, that hit detection, man. Mm. Let me remind you that the Commodore 64 has four directions and a button. The button is fire, so what is jump? That's right, up. If you've ever wondered why some bad games have up to jump, it's probably the C64's fault. The devs of whatever game it was probably did some computer games at one point. Well, this is definitely Ghosts and Goblins, but with bad controls. I cannot get past this one damn spot. You know the most aggravating thing about having up to jump is that you have to angle the joystick in a certain odd way to get yourself to jump forward. And it's also possible to lean the joystick the wrong way and accidentally jump. Oh shit, I actually made it to the first boss. Okay, man, you are going down, son. Come on, come on. Don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me. Oh God, oh God. Oh, well that was easy. I could not get past this second level, and I think it's because something's wrong with the platforms. They give you just like one centimeter of room to get up on the top of the platform, and if you don't get there, you're gonna run against the wall of the platform. Just watch, when I try to walk up to this platform, watch what happens. It like hits the side of it, and then I fall down. You have to jump on it a very specific way, or else it ain't gonna work. And then there's this spot where I try to jump down to the lower platform, but it only spawns after I pass Past it. No, it ain't even that. It spawns, but it doesn't catch me. What the fuck? You know, Ghosts and Goblins on NES is hard because it's made to be hard. A lot of love, development, and hard work went into making one of the hardest games possible. It's hard, but it was made well. This game is hard because it's bullshit and broken. I give it a fuck you. Out of five. The great, great... G Gianni? Gianni? Is that, is that you, buddy? Sister... Oh, I guess not. The great Gianna sisters it is, then. Man, what is with these games and killing my ears? Whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up here. Great Gianna sisters. I see what you did. Oh, you even got mushroom. You got Goomba. Look at the Goomba. Guys, Miyamoto is going to be pissed. I mean, what do I say about it? It's Mario, but you press up to jump. So it's Mario with terrible controls. Guys, can you imagine somebody that grew up with Gianna sisters instead of Mario as a kid? They're out there, man. I told you for a while, the British didn't even have NESs. This was Mario. You know what? I'm curious now. Did Nintendo ever see this? Oh, yes, they did. Even though they didn't file a lawsuit, they pretty much ran them out of town, stating, yeah, we know what you did. But you want to know what happened to Gianna Sisters afterwards? The name was bought by someone else, and a new game was ironically released for the Nintendo DS and later another game on the Switch. The Switch game's assets were then later reused by Accolade to make Bubsy the Wooly Strike back. You can't make this shit up. The Mario ripoff got ripped off by Bubsy. If that doesn't put Bubsy in his place, I don't know what does. I guess the last thing we need to see is what is the King Koopa in this game? What is their bot? Oh, it, it's a bug. Just a bug. And you can walk right past it. Next! Hover Bubber. Now this one I loved because it's funny. You're a guy that steals people's lawnmowers and then destroys people's yards with them. And the whole time you're mowing, people are chasing you. And you can send an attack dog after the guy's chasing you to slow him down. You can tell this is a British game too. Oi, off me flowers, you lunatic! And every time somebody steals the lawnmower back, you just go to somebody else's house and steal one. I would describe the gameplay as Pac-Man but funny. So you know what? Yeah, I like this game. A lot of Commodore fans mention Impossible Mission, so we're gonna check that one out too. Another visitor. Wh what? Stay a while. Stay forever. <laughs> B-17 bomber kidnapped us, man. Okay, so what I've been able to gather is you're supposed to search all the stuff in the background to find pieces of a puzzle and then try to put that puzzle together. And the whole time you're trying to avoid these robots. You have a really awkward jump, too. It's not enough to jump. You have to jump forward and roll in the air. Destroy him, my robot. And the jump really turns into a problem when you're trying to do platforming. Ah! Oh! And these robots have a totally fair and smart AI and totally don't camp in front of you. And then you got the elevators, which are simple enough, but make sure you don't go in that little abyss below them. 
Impossible is right. It's impossible to platform in this game at all, and it requires you to do it. I touched the fucking platform. And then you got this shit right here where you got to search the thing, get away from the robot, search the thing, get away from the robot, rinse, repeat. This game is on a lot of people's top 10 Commodore 64 lists, and I'm gonna be honest here, it's somewhat boring and it's got shit controls, I'm not seeing it. Maybe the sequel is better. Oh yeah, drastic improvement. Now this one is called International Karate Plus, and it's pretty good. As you can see, it's a fighting game, and it's amazing how many moves you have for one button and a joystick. My only complaint is it takes a little while to figure out how to turn yourself around, but once you master it, it's pretty fun. I don't know how the C64 did it, but it managed to have a fast-paced fighting game. The controls are really responsive, the moves aren't too hard to figure out, and it has multiplayer. It's got a lot of good things going for it. And this might be my favorite game on the C64 so far. Where's this game at Evo? I'll tell you this, it's a lot better than Street Fighter 2 on C64. Yeah, the gang's all here, boys. Just like the real Street Fighter, if I did any special moves in this, it's a mistake. I have never been any good at these kind of games. And when you get rid of all but one button, oh, it gets worse. If you thought the Game Boy version was stripped down, whoo, boy. The whole game feels so slow and choppy, it just feels like the matches take longer than they actually do. See, this is the difference between a fighting game that was made for the C64 and a fighting game that was watered down to work on a C64. By the time Street Fighter was out, fighting games had evolved so much. If they didn't do nothing but find out a way to get more buttons on a C64, that would have helped. And the biggest disappointment is Guile's theme doesn't go with this game. Now, some of the games I wanted to review for this couldn't work right. So I've got a lot of footage of games that I couldn't actually play. Like people who know their C64 games are probably going to ask me, did you play Raid over Moscow? I really wanted to check this one out, but when you try to get the plane out of the hangar, the door doesn't open. I know you're supposed to push the F7 key to open the door, but I kept tapping the F7 key and it didn't open. Maybe F7 on a C64 emulator and F7 on my keyboard are different. I don't know. So unfortunately, I can't review this one. And then I have some there's just not much to say about, like Karateka. It's just a mediocre fighting game and very slow paced. However, this game is infamous for being able to kill yourself as soon as you start the game. I <laughs> get fucked. And then there's Little Computer People, which is weird. It's a life simulator where you watch this little 8-bit guy, not him, live out his life. This game was apparently the inspiration for The Sims. So here you go, it's the grandfather of The Sims. You're supposed to be able to type commands to him and he'll do stuff, but I haven't been able to get him to do anything. I did get him to do one thing. I took a look on a C64 wiki to find out what commands he answers to, and you have to say please on every order. Order. Plus, he responds to burn and kitchen. So I said, please burn kitchen down. And... <laughs> The Last Ninja. Now, this is another one that's considered one of the best of the best. In fact, I've seen this on number one on a lot of top ten lists. <laughs> Well, the music ain't too bad, I gotta say. Hey, what is that? Can I grab that? All right, give it here. Give it, give it to me. Give it, let me have it. Give it, oh, there we go. Oh, shit, I guess we gotta jump on those stones, okay? Oh, God, what is that jump? What is it with C64 games and not getting the jump mechanic right? Okay, so I did a little digging. Apparently, Super Mario Brothers came out in the UK in 1987, and so did this game. So I'm guessing because of that, British people did not yet know how to program a jump. Gianna sisters notwithstanding. I'll say this, the times that you're not running around clueless like a diseased ferret tripping on permanent marker fumes, you're getting your ass handed to you by the bog standard enemies of this game. Just one simple fight with one simple enemy will take half of your fucking hell. Oh shit, I thought this guy was wearing a reflective safety vest. Safety ninja protects you from harm. Hey yo, it's Buddha. Hey, how's your bombing him? Has anybody ever asked, does Buddha like Fuda? <laughs> Eat my whole ass!
My main problem with this game, other than the jumping, is it is impossible to pick shit up. I must have sat here and tried to get this key in the background for God knows how long. I know you could pick it up. I saw people do it in walkthroughs. And I tried every button on the keyboard. I even found a commit Suzuki button. Don't know why you'd ever need that. And I see people in walkthroughs that can jump through this shit like it ain't nothing. I can't, but I can sure as hell moonwalk away from it. There's a lot of moonwalking in this game. Maybe Last Ninja is dancing to the sick beats. I did figure out what you're supposed to do to pick something up. It's something like you have to duck down, but to duck down, you have to like hold the button down or some shit. And then there's this dragon I couldn't figure out how to get past. Can you imagine? Imagine being a child in the 80s and the C64 is your only means of gaming. There's no internet. Your parents have bought you a new game. It's this one. And this is your new game you're going to be playing for a little while. So you have no choice but to try to figure out this cryptic shit. I don't know, man. I don't know. I got a lot of things to say about this game. None good. Sorry. And yes, I did play the sequels. It's just the same shit. All right, kids, let's change it up. Now, I showed you Street Fighter 2 and I I showed you Ghosts and Goblins, and I showed you Commando, which was on the NES as well. But what other game franchises that we know got on the C64? Well, what if I tell... No, no, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait on that one. <laughs> but I will show you Castlevania on the C64. Now, we've heard the C64 do some great songs, so I'm kind of wondering what it'll do to Castlevania. <laughs> that kind of sucks. Well, at least the graphics look okay and the scrolling is really smooth. The control could use some work. It's not the game's fault, it's the controller's fault. Like I said, four directions and a button. So as you can imagine, up is jump. But if you press up and the button, you use your secondary. And just by muscle nature, I press up and the button at the same time trying to jump because my mind is fighting it. No, you have to push the button. No, you have to press up. So I do both. And because up is jump, it's impossible to go up the stairs because you just keep jumping. The game is definitely as balls hard as the real Castlevania, except now you've got shitty controls. I will say this, though. This is not the worst version of Castlevania I've ever seen. That award might go to the MS-DOS version. Okay, let's just have the soundtrack and every sound effect be a car alarm. Um, yes, well, I prefer my music made by door buzzers, thank you. One of my friends has a door buzzer in his house and it goes off in our Discord call. Eater! I'm like, dude, do you live in a store? Snake hip, no fetish, drawing motherfucker? How about we look at Donkey Kong, or I'm sorry, Donkey... <laughs> <laughs> and I can't get it to work. I guess you could say this version sucks, Donkey. I can't even say it. There actually is a proper version of Donkey Kong for the C64, and it's licensed by Nintendo. And I'm just as bad at this one as I am the NES version. And you press the button to jump! Praise the Lord! How about Double Dragon on the C64? Well, the music's badass, but the controls are awful. They feel so stiff and unresponsive. This was another one of those games where holding the button down gave you a different set of moves. It controls like shit, it feels shit, the music's okay, but overall... I've got one more that you probably heard of, but I'm gonna save it for last. So let's see what else we can torture ourselves with. Now this would not be a C64 review if I didn't talk about Mule. Mule is a farming simulator, but in space, question mark? You buy some land, you buy some mules, and you mine things, basically. And the object of the game is to just make a bunch of money. You can sell supplies and the stuff you mined at auction or to the other players. Every in-game day you get more land and then you can set another mule down to get resources for you. There's random events that happen. You can win money by gambling. Wait, what does that say? Smith or Okay, I thought that said shit whore. Let's go, my little mule. Let's go to work, Imperial Walker looking motherfucker. It's a pretty complicated game for something on the C64, but it's also addicting. It don't have much for graphics, but it doesn't need it. So, you know what? Thumbs up. Good game. The Way of the Exploding Fist. With a title like 
like that, how do I not play it? What do I even say to that? Holy shit! That is peak sound design. I see they come from the Sonic Adventure School of Audio Mixing. This is very much like International Karate, except it's not near as good. In fact, it kind of sucks. And that's all I really have to say about it. I just wanted you to hear the beautiful noise this thing makes. Here's another game that's considered one of the better C64 games. Monty on the Run, also known as Monty Mole. And this is another game that's known for having a super catchy soundtrack. Listen and be amazed. That is what we in the biz call a fucking banger. But how's the game? My God, is it hard. The level is set up like this big gigantic maze that you might have to Google up a map for. There's a lot of dead ends and death traps and shit like that. And a lot of spots where you have to time your movements just right or you're gonna die. Okay, this is gonna smush me, isn't it? Well, I'll just wait for it to, oh! Now I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm 100% convinced that those smashers have no pattern whatsoever. Yet somehow they can still detect when your ass is under it. The game all in all is is a memory game where you just have to learn the patterns of all the enemies so maybe the smashers do have a pattern but like look at this flying clock or whatever that keeps coming towards me you cannot jump over it it makes it look like you can but you cannot you know what you're supposed to do with this enemy stand there yeah it stops scrolling at a point so it won't hit you and like all commodore 64 games the jump is fucked it's got a set distance it goes no more no less but at least it's mapped to the button and not up this time but that does mean trying to do precision jumps is hell. And there's even spots where you gotta make pixel perfect jumps or you're gonna die. I didn't beat this game. It's so fucking hard. I know there's people out there that can beat it, but I'm not that person. And I have nothing but respect for the person that can beat this game. Unless you're a Smash player. I hate Smash players. You know what? That was a pretty good game. I like that. How about we end the video with another good one? Guys, would you believe me if I told you there's a survival horror game on the C64? And this is not a recent development. This isn't an indie game that looks like C64. This isn't a recent game. This isn't an Ichio game. This is real. Gentlemen, I give you Project Firestart. You are sent to a research spaceship that has cut communication with Earth to find out what happened to the crew and the scientists, and immediately, shit gets real. Let me take this time to tell you that this game came out in 1989, before games were gory. And this game is very gory. The monsters look kind of ridiculous, but I will say they probably looked cool in 89. This is another game where you better get a map or you draw a map, something, because this ship is pretty huge. And just like a real survival horror game, you have limited supplies, limited ammo, limited everything, and an unlimited supply of monsters. You'll be running around opening computer terminals, reading lore, and the lore is pretty important, actually. You're supposed to read it all so you'll know what's going Going on and so you'll get a different ending yeah there's multiple endings in this game if i had to say something bad about it the combat's kind of weak but i think it's supposed to be also notice that timer down there yes you are timed so you may have to play this game a few times before you actually beat it but since there's multiple endings you'll want to play this game a lot anyway i can't recommend this game enough and i imagine back then it had to be pretty spooky I would say I wish somebody would remake it, but you know, we kind of have dead space, so anyway, good game. And that is it for the C64 games. Or is it? I told you I was going to keep one to the end, and I said it's from a franchise you know very well. What is it? I'll show you. No, that is not Metal Gear. You have to see it to believe it, boys. It's Metal Gear on the C64. I bet you ain't played this Hadouken Kajumbo game. Or maybe you have, because this is the NES Metal Gear. The worst game in the series made even worse. Featuring a 30 second load time to open up your codec. Man, the people who ported this obviously did not know how Metal Gear works. 
The alert mode is gone. There is no alert mode. The soldiers just start shooting at you. When you're punching the enemies, you can't even tell if you're hitting them or not. Oh, that is some expert sprite work right there. Speaking of expert sprite work, I saw for just a split second, there's a decapitated set of legs. Maybe Liquid is controlling them. Does the soldiers just immediately start shooting you without even seeing you? It's actually impossible to finish this game. And it takes 30 seconds for the game over screen to show up. And there we go. We have found a game worse than Metal Gear Survive. And that is all the C64 I can stand. So what do I think of it as a a retro game system in 2021. Well, it ain't no NES. I kind of get the feeling that a lot of these games may have been better back when they were new, and there wasn't as much to compare it against back then, especially if you lived in Europe where most people didn't have NES 2600 or anything. So I think there's a rose-colored glasses thing going on with a lot of the people who are nostalgic about this thing. But I also think that about the NES. We tend to forget that for every good NES game, there were like 30 bad ones, maybe more. And it seems to me that that was the case with the C64. And as for me not liking the games that a lot of other people do, I think that's because I didn't grow up with them. But I'm willing to give the C64 another shot one day. I'll even take suggestions on what I should play the next time I do this. Put that shite in the comment section. I can say one thing. I found a whole bunch of new music to listen to. Even in the bad games, the chip tunes were off the fucking hook. So I got mad respect for all those C64 musicians. But anyway, that's the end of it. That's Working Man Games, everybody. Follow me on Patreon. Patreon, follow me on Twitter, but don't do it in real life. I'm paranoid enough as it is. And remember, if we reach our $200 goal on Patreon, I will start making two episodes a month instead of one. You can do the $5 tier or one damn dollar. Anyway, I need to end this video. Bye.